All right, so this video is going to be about why Linux doesn't need a VNC. So usually what happens in a VNC is the host provides a live feed of its desktop to the machine that's accessing it. Now, an alternative to this is forwarding an X11 client. So SSH provides X11 forwarding, meaning that any GUI application opened up in X can be hosted on the host, but the, the actual window can be forwarded to the machine accessing the host. What this means is instead of being inside of the other machine's desktop environment, only the windows are sent to you. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set this up. So I'm gonna show you how to set up the host first so that any clients connecting to your host machine can receive these X11 clients. So what you need to do is you need to first sudo edit into etsy ssh sshd for daemon configuration. Now this is on the host side, remember that. So once you're in this file, you need to go down until you see these X11 forwarding options here. So these are gonna be commented out. So what you need to do is uncomment these. You need to uncomment X11 forwarding and X11 use local host. And what you need to do is say yes to X11 forwarding and you need to say no to use local host. This X11 display offset 10 is optional from my understanding. So once you've made those changes, you're going to need to restart your SSH daemon. If you use systemd, then you can do system ctl restart and then sshd. If you use another init system, then you're going to have to know how to restart that service. Depending on which operating system you're connecting from, you're gonna to need to do different things. So in Linux, it's very straightforward. You just SSH into your host with the dash Y option. This enables X11 forwarding to you and any GUI application you open up on that machine, it will forward the X11 client window to you. So for Mac OS, you need to install an X server because they don't use X anymore. Um, I recommend X Quartz. I've never used it, but that's the one I recommend. In the case of Windows, it's a lot more complicated, so I've decided to make the rest of this video from the side of Windows to show you how to set up X11 forwarding and receive X11 clients on the Windows end. All right, so over here on the Windows end, um, you need to install a third-party X server because Windows doesn't use uh, X anymore. So you can either get Xming or VCXSRV. Uh, VCX server is what I'm going to call it from now on, and I highly recommend VSX server because Xming hasn't been developed since 2007. So once you have VCX server installed, you can start it by typing in xlaunch from your start menu. And this will bring up this box here. It'll give you four options, multiple windows, full screen, one large window, and one window without title. So multiple windows is good for our purposes. Um, I'll talk about one large window and full screen and why that might come in handy later. But for right now, multi windows is very useful because it sets the canvas to the size of your monitor. So now you have to set your display number. If you want a VCX server to automatically choose one for you, you put negative one. Other than that, I recommend putting zero because you always know that it is zero. Hit next. Uh, we're gonna start no client but start a program is an option. This will give you this menu here. Once you fill out these fields here, uh, it'll SSH into your remote and run the program that you put into the remote program box. I recommend starting no client because you can then just SSH into your remote and start as many GUI applications from there as you want. You're gonna hit next. You can enable clipboard and native OpenGL if you like. You can hit next. If you're happy with that configuration, you can save it and run it with xlaunch another time. Once the X server has started, you can go to your SysTray and you'll see the X server logo there signifying that it has started. So now you can open up a command prompt and this is where it gets a bit complicated. So right now it seems that there's a bug um, that won't let you SSH into your remote uh, with X11 forwarding because it'll say that it requires a public key when this is false. What you need to do is go into your root by seeding into slash just like in um, a bash prompt and you need to make a directory called dev, just like in Linux. After you've created that directory, you can cd into that directory. And in that directory, you need to create a file. And that file needs to be tty. So this is just a pass that checks that the host does when you are SSHing into it. The way you can do that is type null with one L, and then the you know output operator, and then the name of the file. So in our case, it's tty. 
Alright, so when I was editing this video, I realized that I left out a crucial part. Ignore the fact that I'm in Linux, and in your Windows command prompt, you need to type in set display in all caps equals. If you set your display um, to be negative one in VC X server, you need to go down into your sysTray and hover over the X server icon to see what display you chose. In our case, we had display zero, so you need to type in localhost colon and now this is where you put your display 0.0, .0 in our case and whatever you chose your display to be that's what you need to set it to once you've done this you can ssh into your host and everything should work properly if you don't it'll say that it cannot open the display so once you've done that you can ssh into your remote now um, you do that by ssh and then you need this option dash y this enables x11 and then the user that you'd like to log into the ip And then if you use a port other than 22, you need to specify that with uh, the option hyphen P and then the port number. Type in your password and you should be SSH'd in. So once you're here, you'll see a warning that no X auth data, that it's using a fake authentication data for X11 forwarding. That is really good. That means that X11 is enabled and that it will still forward to you even though that the authentication is fake. So once you're here, you can start any GUI application that you'd like and it'll start it um, in your local X server. So I'll give you an example and I'll type in surf. And here, surf opens up and it has the Windows 10 theme uh, window and everything and you can I'll go to a website just to prove it to you. And here's Google. And you could resize it. And it might uh, bug out just a bit, but <laughs> it still works. All right, so now I'm going to show you a more advanced thing. Now, I don't know why you'd like to do this, but if you'd like to simulate a VNC and in, simulate an entire remote desktop, this is how you do it. Just a side note, you need to have this dev directory and TTY file inside of whatever drive that you are SSHing from. So in this case I'm SSHing from C. I need to have the TTY file inside of the dev directory in the C drive. It doesn't matter where I am in the drive when I'm SSHing, I just need to be in the drive that has this. So to simplify this process you can create a batch file like I did. Um, I just named it SS, uh, SSH x11 um, and inside I have um, at echo off that just suppresses uh, echoes and then I have set the display variable here so I don't have to do it every time. I have the SSH command. And the last important thing you need is capital CMD backslash K. This will return you to the command prompt after it runs these commands so that you can enter your password. I'll show you how it works. So if I double click this, it'll SSH me in already and I'll just type in my password and X11 will be working. You can also simulate a VNC or a remote desktop connection by um, X by this method as well but one thing you do need to change is um, inside of VC X server so if you kill your X server and then start X launch again in here like I mentioned before you need to select full screen or one large window here or one large without title bar but you cannot do multiple windows because if you start a desktop environment or a window manager in multiple windows it'll try to resize the root window which you cannot do and it'll throw you an error. So I'm going to select one large window because then I won't have to switch out a full screen. And I'm going to set the port to zero again. I'm going to hit next. In this case, you, it might be more practical to start a program um, directly through uh, this wizard um, and just start your window manager here and SSH into it. But I'm just going to start no client again just to show you what it looks like. So you can save your configuration again and name it something like um, desktop environment or something like that and you can finish that and it will start this big, large window where everything on your X server will be contained in so I'm just going to resize that down a bit smaller so that you can see everything that I'm doing still so once you've SSH your machine with the hyphen Y option and with your display variable set then you're all set to go but now everything will be contained inside of this window over here so you'll be able to start desktop environments or window managers. So I'll show you DWM for an example. So I'm going to start DWM, put it in the background. And here we are. So now 
DW has started inside of our X server and it is in this window. You can set the wallpaper as well. One obvious conflict that you might come across is if your hyper or super key is the Windows key inside your desktop manager. So um, you'll obviously be conflicted with Windows interpretation of the Windows key. So one way you can get around this is through the group policy editor. So in your start, you can type in GP edit and it'll open up your group policy editor. So just type in GP edit. So once in the group policy editor under user configuration, you need to go into administrative templates, um, into Windows components, into File Explorer, and in File Explorer, just click on the File Explorer and you'll be presented with all these options. You need to look for the option that is Turn Off Windows Key Hotkeys. Double click that, click Enabled and you can leave a comment if you want to remind yourself why you did this. After that, all your hotkeys should work. In my case, Windows R opens up D menu. One thing that I did notice that doesn't work is Windows Enter. Even with the Windows key shortcuts disabled, Windows Enter s still doesn't seem to work. Um, and that's how I spawn my terminal. I can still start a terminal over here though. And then it'll open up inside of the window manager. Other than that, all the Windows keys should work. Um, for example, closing the window in my case is uh, Windows Shift Q and it still works and doesn't give me errors. Um, it won't disable the Windows Start menu though. If you just tap the Windows key, it'll still open up your start menu, but none of the key combinations will work. So that's it for the Windows side. Thank you for watching and I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I hope you can see why Linux doesn't need a VNC and how to set up an alternative to a VNC. Like, comment, and subscribe for more content.